Hey everybody, this is Robert with Sigma 3 Survival, and we're here for another addition to our, our Wilderness Medic series. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about snake bites. I ran into an interesting plant, which is pretty common in our area, and figured I would show y'all a little trick that I know of uh, for treating snake bites. Um, this particular plant is called Rattlesnake Master, and the reason they call it that plant is because it's excellent for treating uh, any type of uh, venomous snake wound. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the, the roots and create a poultice, and uh, I'm going to show you how that works. But uh, any time that, that you're ever bit by a snake in a wilderness setting, you know, there's a lot of, you know, common misconceptions about things you can or can't do, such as, like, sucking out the venom, which is something you don't want to do, um, you know, cutting yourself, things like that. They, there's just not a whole lot of ways that you can treat a snake bite wound effectively in the field, um, you know, by some of these commonly heard myths. Um, the best thing to do is to keep your heart rate down. Um, if, if it's a lower extremity or an arm or, or something like that, let's say you get bit on your ankle, uh, you want to make sure that, that uh, your leg is always below your heart because you want to keep that venom away from your, your circulatory or your heart as long as you possibly can until you can get to the doctor for some treatment. Um, that's pretty much the most important thing in dealing with any type of snake bite is the, the more you can depress your, your circulatory system and your heart rate, uh, the longer you're going to have before that, that venom starts taking effect. Uh, but the most important thing is to, to treat the wound and then get out as quickly as you can without raising your heart rate. So the next step we're going to take is we're going to dig up the root. Alright, well we've got our, our rootlets dug up and they're, they're basically like just little little tubers or corms underneath the ground. They're, you know, probably less than thumb size depending on what time of year you catch them or how large the plant is. I'll give you a close up shot. This is, this is the finished product. This is what they look like once they come out of the ground. And you want to clean them up, you want to scrape them real, real well. Another thing I want to add to the mix, since we have it in the area, is I've got uh, some willow bark here. And this stuff is an anti-inflammatory agent, which is going to help with the swelling. And then we also have yarrow, uh, which is a, a coagulant. It stops, uh, helps stop the bleeding. It's a painkiller. Uh, it, it will literally numb, numb the skin. Uh, you use it in your mouth. Uh, it'll numb your mouth just like Origel. And we're going to combine all these together into a poultice uh, to help treat the wound. So, the first thing that you want to do is uh, process the poultice. best with vocabulary. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to process this rootlet into a manageable size. to reduce the amount of venom that gets into your system as much as possible while limiting any potential infection that may happen. So what a poultice does is it'll help draw the infection out. And uh, just like um, if you've ever seen like um, a brown recluse bite, you can take a slice of potato 
and any type of starch uh, will help draw infection out. So uh, this is not only an astringent, it's a real starchy substance, a rootlet, and uh, we're going to apply that over the wound with our other uh, medicinal products here in a second. And as soon as I get this process, we'll come back and show you how to wrap it up. All right, we got our poultice processed, and you can either crush it or you can finely, finely chop it with your knife. Um, which actually is probably a little bit better method because it'll help keep the juices in a lot more, which is the, the stuff that you want to keep. Um, here's, here's the finished product. and So you're going to apply this directly over the wound. And like I said, this is Rattlesnake Master, uh, a little bit of yarrow, and some, some willow bark that's been chopped up and processed. Uh, to create a poultice and you're going to apply this directly let's just imagine that I've got a snake bite right here and this video is actually inspired uh, by a three foot water moccasin that I did a video on a few days ago that uh, literally jumped out at me uh, was walking through some tall grass and uh, you know stuff like that happens it was uh, my lucky day and not his uh, he lost his head and I showed y'all how to uh, how to gut and skin them, prepare them for cooking. So you're gonna just place this right over the wound, and you want to get good pressure. And another thing I forgot to mention is is directly after getting bitten, sometimes venom will remain on the outside of the wound. So if there's any kind of venom that's still around. Uh, the area, you, you need to make sure that you wipe that off and clean that area up. Um, so the next step is I just took my t-shirt off. You don't always have a med kit with you, so you got to learn to improvise. Um, you're just going to, you just twist your t-shirt up and find a flat portion so that all the, the poultice stays together. Press directly down and then just wrap it just like you would any other kind of uh, bleeding wound. And I'm just going to tie a, a simple little overhand knot here. And you want to make sure it's real tight, because if it's not tight, then when you're walking, it's going to start to work loose, and the poultice is going to move around all over and end up falling out of the bandage. So really crank it down, get it as tight as you possibly can, without losing circulation. And when you do start walking out, you want to make sure that uh, if, if, if at all possible, relieve pressure on the extremity uh, that's been bitten. You know, if it's your leg, uh, try to find a crutch. Because if you've gotten bitten by a, a snake that's got hematoxin uh, and not a neurotoxin, you're going to have massive swelling almost uh, immediately. So you want to address that, and the least that you can get your heart rate pumping is, is better. So just remember to try to, try to stay calm and uh, don't panic. You know, that's the worst possible thing that you can do. Just make sure that you get out as quickly and get to a hospital, um, like I said, as fast as you can without elevating your heart rate. That's numero uno. Just remember, don't get excited. Don't get your heart rate up and get out as, as, as quick as you possibly can. And, uh, you know, this is just one of the, the little things that we teach at our wilderness medic class. And uh, we appreciate y'all. And, and please help support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you've got any additional comments or, or things that you can add to this, uh, you know, please drop them in the comments line because we appreciate any kind of info that y'all can uh, can bring to us because we certainly don't know everything and uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate y'all's commentary and uh, stay tuned for the next video thanks